All right, Miss Rihanna. So we're going to finish the one we started talking about together this afternoon. And I have to tell you, when you were saying, oh, because I know that AD is congruent to CF, and I know that DC is congruent to itself by reflexive, then I know that AC is congruent to DF. And so that's a big part of what we need to prove here, because what, if we can prove that these two triangles are congruent, and we're going to be able to by angle, angle side, then it's not a big leap from there to showing that those um, sides are actually parallel. So let's just take a quick walk through it. So if you look, you've started your statements and your reasons. So over here, I'm just going to continue on with my statements and reasons. Okay. So first of all, I am going to say that, and we were discussing about these angles, so I'm just going to say right now that angle BAC and angle EDF are right angles. That one sec, though. I'm sorry, I got to pause for my child. All right, sorry about that. I had to pause to talk to my child for a minute. All right, so um, B A C, this angle right here, B A C, and angle E D F. Those are right angles. We talked about that in class, and that was because we were given a couple of perpendicular lines. So perpendicular lines. So sloppy. Perpendicular lines form right angles. That's how we know those angles are right angles because we were given a couple sets of perpendicular lines. So as soon as we know those angles are right angles, we can say angle BAC is congruent to angle EDF. And the reason is all right angles are congruent. I know it probably feels silly. You probably feel like you should have been able to jump right to there. But if you're just giving that those lines are para, or I'm sorry, perpendicular, you first need to state that those two angles are right angles. Okay, great. So we've got that. Now we're going to break it down for those lines, and I'm going to prove in a moment that this side AC is totally the same length as this side DF. So let's take a look at the part that you were talking about in class. You were, or not in class, after school, we were talking. You're not one of my students. You said DC is going to be equal to DC. That just means the length of DC is equal to the length of DC, and that's your reflexive property. Awesome. And after that, you can say AD plus DC is equal to DC plus CF, and I have to pause the video again to talk to my child. All right, sorry about that, Rianne. I have to keep um, pausing because I have a five-year-old. So now we were given, so these AD plus DC, those lengths added together are DC plus CF. And all that is is um, the segment addition theorem. And I'll just go over quick what that is. So that's the segment addition theorem is what tells us that. So if you were given, you know that AD is equal to CF. So you knew you were given it. AD was congruent to CF. So you knew that that was congruent to that right from the get-go. By reflexive property, you just showed that DC was the same length as DC. And so what the addition, the segment addition theorem says, if I have two lengths that are equal, and I add the same length to each of them, the overall larger length will also be equal. I don't know. I hope that helps. And so then what I want to look at is, I want to, what is AD plus DC? AD plus DC, AD plus DC is this length AC. So you have to say that now. So we have to say AC is equal to AD plus DC. So the side length AC is the same as AD plus DC. And you can just see that visually on the picture. But I need to state these things because in a minute I'm going to use substitution. So all that is is that a whole length, a whole segment, 
is equal to the sum of its parts. And these reasons would be on, I'm sure, that chart that I gave you or that packet I gave you before you left today. And similarly to that, I can tell you that DF is equal to, DF is equal to DC plus CF. DC plus CF. Again, the whole seg segment is equal to the sum of its parts. All righty, Ru. Now that I know that AC is equal to AD plus DC, there's AD plus DC, and I've just found out that that's the same as, this whole thing is the same as AC. Also, on the other side, you see DC plus CF. There's DC plus CF, and I'm telling you, oh, that junk's exactly the same as DF. So now I can finally say, because this is equal to that, and this is equal to that, I can say that AC, that length, is equal to DF, and that's by substitution. I just took AC and substituted in to what it was equal to. I took DF and substituted into what it was equal to. All right, so now I have that these lengths of these segments are the same. Therefore, you can say AC is congruent to df and that's because um, congruent sides have the same length congruent segments have the same length so because these have the same length now you can suddenly say that those are congruent that just makes sense so um, congruent sides congruent segments have the same measure Oh, that's so ugly. So when I showed up here that those have the same measure, then I know those are congruent. So at this point, I now have that angle is congruent to that angle. So that angle in ABC is congruent to that angle in EDF. I now have that this side, AC, on that first triangle is congruent to this side on that second triangle. Additionally, you were given that angle B is congruent to angle E. You were given that that angle is congruent to that angle. So now that we have an angle right here, another set of angles, these right here, and we have congruent sides, by angle, angle, side, I know that triangle, so I'm continuing over here, triangle BAC is congruent to triangle ED, is that an F, EDF, triangle EDF, and the reason would be angle, angle, side, angle, angle, side. All right, now that I have those two triangles being congruent to one another, I know that this angle right here is congruent to this angle right here. We're almost done, I swear. Now we know that angle, is that angle C? is congruent to angle, is that F? And that's why corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. Once I know that this and this are congruent, I have two lines, B, C, and that's E, F, are lines cut by transversal A, F. So I have my lines B, C, and C, B, C, and E, F, cut by transversal A, F. As soon as I know these angles now are congruent, I can tell you that B, C is parallel to E, F. And that's called the converse of corresponding angles theorem. So it's the converse of corresponding, oh, that's so ugly, corresponding angles theorem. And let me just, you can write that just out in words. You can say when two lines, 
that line and that line. When two lines are cut by a transversal, that's the transversal, if corresponding angles are congruent, you know those lines must be parallel. And we had to go through all that rigmarole to prove that those triangles were congruent so that we could get these two angles congruent. And then we have corresponding angles being congruent forces those lines to be parallel. So it looks to me like that would be the proof for that problem. Wowza, that was not an easy one, at least for me. And with a kid interrupting me a couple times, not in a bad way. I love my five-year-old, but it's probably didn't do a great job explaining this, but there it is. Re and uh.